Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about nightshades. First, what are nightshades? Well, here's a list. Ashwagandha, bell peppers, aka sweet peppers. Bush tomato, cape gooseberry, also known as ground cherries, not to be confused with regular cherries. Cocono is a fruit native to Spain. There's eggplant, garden huckleberry, not to be confused with regular huckleberries. There's goji, goji berries, aka wolfberry. Hot peppers, such as chili peppers, jalapenos, habaneros, chili-based spices. Uh, red pepper or cayenne pepper. Black pepper is not a nightshade. Uh, there's kajera fruit native to Australia. Naranjilas is a tomato-like plant native to South America. Paprika, pepinos, a melon shrub native to Peru. Uh, pimentos is the fruit of a sweet pepper usually used in stuffing and olives. Potatoes, but not sweet potatoes. Tomarillos, it's a tree tomato. Tomatillos, a small green tomato. And tomatoes. Many spice blends, i.e. curry powder or steak spices, and sauces like Tabasco sauce contain nightshades. So why should we avoid nightshades? Well, there's lectins in nightshades. Actually, all plants and even animals contain some lectins, a class of sugar-binding proteins with many biological roles, including protecting plants, especially the seeds of the plant, against predation. Not all lectins are problematic. The lectins we want you to avoid are the ones with the, with the ability to increase intestinal permeability, or leaky gut syndrome which are found in nightshades. These are lectins which resist digestion and are relatively heat stable, so there are still sufficient quantities to cause an issue after cooking, and have the ability to strongly interact with proteins in the membranes of the cells that line the intestines. And some can even bind to receptors in these membranes and be transported intact across the intestinal barrier. There are also saponins in nightshades. The flowers, fruit, and foliage of nightshade family contain a type of saponin called glycoalkaloids. Saponins can also contribute to a leaky gut and have adjuvant activity. An adjuvant is a chemical that stimulates and exaggerates an immune response. The glycoalkaloid in tomatoes is such a potent adjuvant that it is used in vaccines to ensure that the recipient develops immunity against the virus they are being inoculated against. This is critical in the discussion of autoimmune disease because dietary saponins are believed to rev up the immune response to the proteins leaking out of the gut. When antibodies are formed against the proteins, like gluten, they have an amino acid sequence that look very similar to sequences of other normal proteins like transglutaminase in the human body, the chances of developing an antibody against oneself increases. When this happens, the immune system attacks normal healthy proteins or cells in your own body, and this is the development of autoimmunity. Beyond these actions as opponents, the glycoalkaloids inhibit a key enzyme, acetylcholinesterase, which is required for nerve impulse conduction. As a result, glycoalkaloids can further increase chronic pain in many individuals. Glycoalkaloid poisoning can occur with excessive consumption of nightshade vegetables, and many researchers have hypothesized that the low level of toxic exposure from the moderate consumption of nightshades can contribute to a variety of health conditions. Another problematic substance is capsaicin, a steroidal stimulant found in chili peppers. It's one of the substances in peppers that gives them heat. While a variety of health benefits have been attributed to the capsaicin, it is also a potent irritant to a variety of tissues, including skin, eyes, and mucous membranes. Very importantly, there is evidence that capsaicin can increase intestinal permeability. I hope this gives you some insight on nightshades. Have a great day. God bless.